she will take your question about how to prepare for your technical interview and how to prepare for your hr interview so meanwhile she is joining please do confirm can you hear me properly yes no. hi apurva can you hear me yeah hi i can hear you perfectly fine okay so i started the session already okay okay so if you have uh, the something to share you can share your screen oh uh, yeah i have to upload a presentation here to uh, make it you having both option you can upload or you can share your screen so guys please do confirm through the chat window if you can hear us or not and do let us know what type of question you are going to ask in the today session what are the challenges you having whenever you are going for the technical interview whenever you are going for the the chat interviews what is the common question you are facing over there so what is the question you are facing please do let us know so i hope everyone can see the screen Apurva, you can introduce yourself and start the things. It's up to you. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Apurva, and I have been uh, running this venture in conversation from for almost three years now. And I keep conducting web webinars and workshops un under this venture. Have been associated with couple of development centers in Bombay and Bangalore, and also kind of helping some tier two MBA colleges to have more technical skills developed for the students. and those are the kind of sessions that I normally take uh thanks to scholar hard to pinder and shalinder to get me here on board and talk to you guys about cracking interviews technical and hr rounds uh feel free to set your expectations uh, from the particular uh, workshop in the chat section and i'll ensure that i incorporate all of those things while i discuss about the topic thank you and welcome all So guys, what are the queries? What are the question you have been keep asking through the chat window? We are looking at the chat. I mean, when you can start, Purva. Sure. So the way I have planned to structure uh, today's session is, uh, I think I can skip my introduction and I can get into the topic. The way I am thinking about this master class is, uh, while you guys are setting the expectations for what. or you are looking for what are your key takeaways that you plan to take post this session i want to take you guys from a journey of where you start making resumes and suppose your resume get shortlisted for a particular role now the deal is how do you take that personality that you have built across in the resume align that with the job description and the role format that the hiring manager is looking for and enter the interview room and a start interview so that's the uh, three three step degree and diagram that i'm going to follow and also take you guys through this particular master class so we're going to start uh, obviously like i said that we're going to start from the candidate journey then i'll move on and talk about their sense of behavioral and technical interviews in terms of how they are different how uh, what are the key do's and don'ts that you want to follow in the, these each of these kinds of interviews and i'll also leave you guys with some domain wise technical prep kit because no matter which domain you kind of go in there is a little uh, differentiation factor that comes in interviews for them and maybe i'll also leave you guys with some of the key questions that you can ask the interviewer while towards the end of your interview so like i said that we're going to start from resume i hope everybody is able to view the screen you can see and on the left hand side there's a snapshot of resume which is technically a snapshot of my own resume and i have uh, written couple of questions for you to kind of figure out 
So take two minutes, uh, read through uh, the scan or the snapshot of resume and figure out what are these three points trying to say. Feel free to comment in the chat section on what you feel about the three questions that they are written in the right hand side of the slide. And I'll just give you two minutes to kind of just get in a sense and you also get in the shoes of drafting the resume and then moving to the interview room. Like I said, that this is just a snapshot of resume. So in case anyone is having any questions, even around resume, feel free to post in the chat and I might just answer while others are reviewing the resume. So uh, uh, the reason that I have put up this snapshot right now in front of you is consisting of two portions of a personality. One is the uh, work profile that we have been building for years now. So technically, what kind of roles we're involved in, what kind of work we do, and what all activities and responsibilities we undertake. So that is something that you can see in the first part of the uh, resume snapshot. While in the second part of resume snapshot, we talk and you see it's a lot more personal things that have that have been mentioned, which is not directly related to the role or not directly related to the profile that you may be applying for. It is more communicating about how you are as a person, what are your interests, what kind of things you enjoy doing, what kind of things you have been doing in the past, and some of your skills that you have owned all through this while, through your school, through your college, through your work profiles. So what all skills you have coming and bringing on table. So if someone kind of notices the uh, writing style of the past working activities, it is a lot more formal. While in the bottom part of the uh, resume section, it is a bit informal. It is more about the achievements that I've gained, more about the work profiles that I've worked beyond the usual ones. Uh, do you find something missing here? Uh, yeah, obviously my academic education is missing here couple of other projects or responsibility positions that if you have taken, those are missing here. But the bottom line remains that you all need to pick and choose what fits in the resume and what doesn't, because we all want to restrict our resume capacities to, uh, to one page. And uh, towards the last question, I've, I've, I'm keeping this for later time as well, that if you are interviewing, like if you are hiring anyone for the kind of role that I'm, I've put up. What are the questions that you want to ask about uh, me, about the work that I've done, apart from the some usual questions that, okay, brief me about your work experience at XYZ company, what kind of projects you've taken, and stuff like that. So what are the questions you think could be a bit more indirect and not very usual questions that anyone could ask you? Uh, some glimpse here that I can leave you guys with is, uh, people are very interested in knowing about your past projects. They like talking about that. So in case you are mentioning about your projects, do keep uh, ensure that you mention about the kind of projects you're working on. Uh, similarly, in terms of your work profile, sometimes people are also interested in some key numbers. When you write some key numbers, they want to know where the numbers are coming from, how that has come into the picture for you, what are learnings you have gained apart from the work that you have performed, what learnings you have gained all, your, all through this while, what are you bringing on table in terms of your leadership, managerial skills, and more qualitative aspects, which we kind of fail and not able to answer and not able to portray through a resume. So I think that is the bottom line on distinction that we kind of give from resume to uh, interviews. So the moment we move from resumes to interviews, we are talking about more of the quantitative stuff in resume. And as we move towards the interviews, we talk about our personality as well. We kind of showcase that what all learnings we have, what all things that uh, we bring on table, apart from the ones that we have mentioned in resume already. I, I think wait for 10 more seconds and 20 more seconds in case anyone has some question. 
around this slide before we move on and talk about uh, the type of interviews and how do we tackle them. So the question are here like this way. The information are so much and all over it. How do you ensure your resume gets shortlisted out of hundreds of resume that is applied for a position? Uh, two ways that you can actually ensure that your resume at least gets shortlisted while you know that there are n number of applications uh, going around to the hiring manager. One, be very precise in terms of what are you showing on your resume and what you're not. Avoid showing some redundant information which does not directly relate with the job profile, which does not directly relate with the vision, sometimes mission of the company or something that company is not dealing with. A refrain from quoting that kind of information. Second, uh, some, somewhere down the line, we all, uh, of lately we've seen that AI and a lot of softwares are there which kind of grab some keywords around the profile that you are, that someone is hiring for. So ensure and incorporate those uh, words, uh, make it presentable in case you feel that, uh, like at least in case you feel that you have worked upon those things, like do not mention something that you have not worked upon, but in case you can fit in those keywords in your resume, do that. That's a short, short way of getting your resume notice out of 100 applications. Keep it very simple, direct, and straightforward. Do not uh, mess around with a lot of fancy resume um, templates. That is another way because a lot of people uh, give a lot of fancy resumes in which the information that they want to portray get lost. And like I was already mentioning some time back that ensure that your resume fits into within one page, no matter how much experience you have. But if someone is very much experienced, like he comes on board with, let's say, seven, eight years or 10 years of experience, and he or she feels that he cannot you know, restrict his resume within one page, uh, one of the very uh, famous advice that I've always got from my mentor is do not extend the length of your resume. Instead, add a, a page and talk about the timeline of your work profiles. So what it does is, in case an HR does not turn over a page, he is not missing out on the in important information that he should know before uh, you know, selecting or uh, rejecting your profile. But in case he turns over uh, the resume to the next page, what he sees is a clear timeline and the job and the work profiles that you have handled in the past. And sometimes that becomes a game changer for a veteran who is looking for a switch or who's trying something new. So uh, these are some uh, key points that I, I always keep in mind whenever I prepare my own resume. And that's my recommendation out here. Any other question before we move ahead? Okay, so let's let's jump right into the two types of uh, interviews. Uh, sorry, Nimit, is it necessary to put all projects in resume and what information should write in past project? Um, answering your question, no, it is not necessary to put out all the projects that you have worked upon in the resume because in a span of, let's say, three years into college and a little more in school, we done tons of projects. So only mention the project which is really, really directly related or indirectly related to your work profile so that um, the HR becomes more interested in knowing more about that project. And, and like that can also be a talking point in your in your interviews. In case you want to showcase something extra that it has not been your core work profile, but now there's a skill which is required um, in your new job and you want to show that as a part of project. So that is one uh, trick that a lot of uh, people use. Like something, for example, I have worked into sales and pre-sales, and now I want to move to you know, a more client-based sales and B2B sales. So I may not have direct exposure of doing B2B sales in my book profiles in past years, but I have done some project which has gained popularity, which has given you a great insight. So in that case, I prefer showing that as my project undertaken. 
than showing into my work experience and that kind of gains attention not only for hr but it also becomes a talking point for me in the interviews so that is one way of turning around your project section uh answering your second part of the question in terms of what information you should write in the past project i think i follow a three pointer game there always talk about the objective that you were trying to achieve and the outcome and leave a line uh, or drop an open line to the interviewer to ask more about the project by talking very briefly within like one sentence about the method methodology that you have used or any analysis or data work that you have captured in while performing that particular project so these are the three pointers that i always uh, try and accumulate in my project under data section uh krishna you said that you have 14 years of experience do i show all the experiences uh maybe you can you want to use the timeline um, gimmick and have a page to talk about your timeline of 14 years while on the front page of your resume i would recommend only capture the important uh, experiences that you that are really related to your work profile or the kind of work that you're looking for and just put an asterisk saying that if you want to know for, all about my journey you can just switch to my timeline how to negotiate notice period with hr in case it is 90 days and no buyout option in existing company i don't think i'll be able to answer this question the right way to negotiate is something that either you check with your uh, hr or with your assisting manager and if you can and you like you together as a team think that you can smoothly hand over and also close your work related stuff within those uh, within the time less than 90 days then i think there is an option and that's only your depending that only depends on the team management skills that you have or the kind of manager you kind of have to negotiate there's no easy way to negotiate in this period okay so uh, here we're coming back to the topic that we're going to talk about behavioral and technical rounds a lot of uh, influx of startups and fintechs and all of these tech driven companies have given behavioral interviews a lot more importance than required the reason a lot of people talk about behavioral interviews is uh, to ensure that you kind of align with the team culture you align with the work culture that we kind of promote as an organization so the idea is to check more about your fitment like how fit you are in terms of your behaving in terms of your actions in terms of your con communications and all of that how be how fit you are for the culture and for the work that you're going to take up in future even when like in case you get hired maximum cases um we have the interviews are based on your past experiences they are more scenario based where you're given a scenario and you have to detail about something Uh, usually taken by leaders of the teams that you're going to be hired for or um, the the hr team because they are the two uh, spokes who really can take a behavior interview and figure out whether you are a right or not right fit for their companies and their teams while in contrast technical round is completely uh, quantitative and qualitative in nature uh, you talk about everything that you have written in your resumes you talk about everything that you have done in the past in terms of the work the knowledge and the skills that you come on, come on board with uh, the, the the direct industry experience the direct direct uh, concepts that are going to be used for your work profiles are tested here in technical rounds uh, i have given couple of uh, examples as well that in case it's a behavior round you are more uh, being spoken about your past scenarios for example that tell me about a time when you had to deal with a conflict at work or if you can describe a situation where you need to make an important decision and that was like really under pressure while uh, technical rounds are more case studies guess estimates scoring test for software people a lot of aptitude tests are also included out there uh, these all test driven you know to assess technically assess your level of uh, knowledge and level of skills that you own is what is being done in technical rounds let's deep dive first into behavioral segment uh close that piece out and then move to technical rounds to talk about more about what you need to do and what what you do not need to do for a good technical round like i said behavioral interviews are more to check with your fitment right so a lot of hrs a lot of uh, leadership people also sometime give task uh, to you in terms of they have given you situations and you need to come back with solutions and you need to devise something uh 
across domains irrespective of the work profile that you're going to apply for irrespective of the role that you're going to put in usually we have the interviews are same and static in nature and hence we always say that whenever we go uh, for an hr round or for a behavioral round of interview we need to prepare ourselves more qualitatively we have to showcase our uh, hidden skills we have to ensure that um, we convince the uh, interviewer with their answers and we need to be more you know ready in terms of storytelling so that these are the key skills that you need to either showcase or portray whenever you sit for these kinds of rounds so in case um, you are asked a scenario so how you should you know devise your answer together to ensure that you incorporate all the important components into the into the picture it's more like a 7-8 point or game so for example you are given a specific situation so take few moments and figure out which situation you want to detail and the decision of which situation you want to pick will be dependent on what actions did you take how involved you were in that particular situation what was the outcome was the outcome worth talking about and what was the outcome more favorable or unfavorable then uh, did that outcome or did that particular scenario enhances some of your skills or showcase some of your strengths during the answer so these are the three four points that we keep in mind and if we think that we have sub- sufficient points to talk about uh, for a situation that we are thinking in our head then go ahead and formulate the answer so the answer is driven more towards talking about the specific situation that you have faced what kind of situation you were in did you have a team were you alone uh, were you faced by more uh, senior people was it a problem with the junior people and all of that assess that situation then you need to describe your actions what exactly you did so obviously define that what was the objective that you were trying to solve what were the problems that you were facing that you were genuinely trying to solve there are situations when you have three problems to solve but you are hitting only one or two and and it could be just in to, interest of time it could be interest of your actions it could be easily easily resolved hard to resolve and all of that so obviously talk about the objective that you were setting for yourself the problems that you were facing and the problems that you thought that you would focus on that's that's where you have to clear and break it down the problem and then you go ahead and talk about the actions that okay these are the problems that i had these are the actions that i took to kind of resolve that particular problem and then also um, focus on your skills and strengths that in case you use any of the capacity and capabilities that you have apart from you know the usual ones how did you use them how did that actions uh, impacted other people around you what really was the outcome of that particular situation and if there are any more examples that you can put in place often a lot of uh, follow up questions that come back on a scenario or the answer that you are giving they are more in lines of okay if you are sitting today have you done something differently have you done something uh, unusual or would you have still picked up the same response and the same action and the same outcome uh, for the particular situation sometimes the question also is like what could you have done better did you have any shortcomings in that particular incident or uh, what could you have done to change the outcome that you are facing today was the out- outcome favorable in your opinion was the outcome unfavorable in your opinion so these are the more follow up questions that usually people ask to test out that okay how comfortable you are and there are times when you are given negative situations which where you talks about failures where you talks about negative things and negative hopes and in that case we all keep trying to cover up cover up ourselves we keep trying to ensure that okay we do not turn out to be negative but i think uh, those type of questions are more to ensure that you are a person who kinds of take his failure on his shoulders and take the responsibility and then move ahead and talk about okay what you could have done better now if the incident has not worked out well what learnings you have taken back from those kinds of incidents that's what really on hr or and leadership people is looking for because even if today when you look around your team cultures sometimes nobody really enjoys talking about a toxic culture everybody wants to be very empathetic towards each other so that team building skills is what usually hr and leadership teams are looking for so ensure that even if you are faced with a negative solution or a negative problem ensure that you 
turn it positive either by talking about your learnings either you talk talking about your key, key takeaways either you talk about your own shortcomings that okay i could have done this better i could have turned around the situation in this more, more better manner and be be kind of little more open when you answer these questions and understand that these are a lot more judgment based questions the way you look at the answer or the way you look at the situation other people other person could be looking it from a different lens he could be looking from a different perspective and often these are kinds of experiences are like often these kinds of situations are guided by your past experience someone might have a bad experience with the kind of outcome that you're talking about so these all questions are little more judgment based to so try to have a little more neutral opinion be more acceptable to what others are saying in terms of the feedback because there could be times that you know someone else gives you and leaves you with a better piece of advice with a better piece of handling situations and all of that so kind of respect those boundaries of judgment and do not feel sad or bad about the fact that hey you do not know because you have not been in my situation and so on and so forth so try to be that acceptable and open about uh the acceptance whenever you know you sit for these kinds of rounds just to explain the situation a bit more better i am leaving you guys with these two kinds of examples one is more about uh, facing a difficulty second is more about showcasing your skill slash talent or skill slash strength so in case you talk about so where you have to really work your uh, level up and collaborate with someone who is very hard to work with and in the, on the other hand you are given you have to showcase an example which is more positive in nature talking about where you have led a team where you have led a project where you have at least demonstrated leadership in some or the other manner so even these two examples you can see that one is a lot more negative side and it talks it could be, it could turn negative if you haven't really responded in a positive manner and other by default the incident is more positive in nature so you will definitely feel more comfortable talking about good things about you than about the bad things or the negative things but uh, one trip and trick that I, I always use is even if i'm talking about my shortcoming even if i'm talking about my weaknesses you know a normal question that okay talk to me about your strengths and weaknesses so whenever i talk about weaknesses or negative parts about myself i always leave it leave the answer with an extra line an added line of what i am doing to make it better what are the things that i'm working on to make that situation better in future for myself so this line is more powerful and it turns a negative situation into a positive one for us so if you want to turn those negative those you know failure incidents and low moments in your life into a positive segment try to add a line on talking about okay hey i have not been a good public speaker but now i've joined the stoast masters club in my city and i go there regularly and that has given me a boost so someone who is interviewing he would understand that okay at least the person is aware about his negative and shortcomings and he's taking a step to do something better and that gives him a lot more faith in you and trust in you that okay you are a person who gonna course correct the negative things course correct the bad things that have happened to you because we all are very prone to make mistakes so the idea is not to no make no mistakes the idea is to if you make a mistake accept that review that and ensure you do not repeat it so that's how uh, these behavior runs technically are so i'll wait 2 minutes or or let's say let's say 30 seconds for any questions on uh, behavioral interviews before we deep dive and talk about the technical rounds in behavior interviews can we put situation of company's pressure about work and timeline of finished work uh one thing that i always seen sometime is that uh, a lot of people somehow fall into a trap of talking you, 
you know the shortcomings that you have faced in your past company the shortcomings you have faced with your past manager or with your past team i would personally recommend that refrain on showing any of those uh, segments into negative light however you can obviously talk about you know the hard deadlines the client deliverables but with a positive intent you cannot say that hey i was choked with work because you know i was giving three projects at a point of time and all of them came up with similar kind of deadlines i mean that's not a fair answer maybe you can say that hey i could not prioritize things better and all of the client deliverables just you know fell on table at once however i tried to ensure that i prioritize the important ones before i prioritize the other ones or maybe i, I you know i divided the team with my divided the work within my team or um, you know i kind of asked for an extension sometime like if your manager kind of agrees to that and all your managers you know all your managers just offered some help to wind up the work quickly i mean obviously end on a positive note do not end something on a on a negative note that doesn't really work well um, i mean i have not seen that working well in the past at least how can i prepare myself for the behavioral round uh, one good way of preparing yourself for the behavioral round is to think about scenarios that you have genuinely faced in the past at least be prepared with those kinds of answers and those kinds of incidents that you have faced in the past it is more to do with your thought process than to uh, do with your genuinely preparation like we do normally for a technical round and the reason i say this is because this is like very very you know blank space to talk about but just prepare, preparing yourself for the kind of answers that you might give the you know rem- reminiscing your old incidents old experiences thinking more in terms of like okay where did i go wrong what, what things i've done better or are there any more skills that i want to showcase in my behavior round per se so you prepare yourself in those thought processes so that whenever you are faced a question or a scenario in actual interview round you are more prepared you have more pointers to think about you have more pointers to talk about and you are more confident in terms of okay i know this and i have got this however sometimes a lot of people are also faced with the kind of problems that they never faced in past in that case i am my my response usually remains that hey be very uh, if you think a person equivalent to your work profile or equivalent to the experience that you have might have faced those kind of situations then try and answer those situations create a scenario or think yourself in a scenario for example you what would you have done in case you have like you have been facing that kind of situation then go ahead think through put yourself in, into into his or her shoes uh, you know uh, think about that particular situation think about how would you have acted think about what outcome you would have been satisfied upon and frame that answer and give it back to the interviewer however if you think that you know it is very unlikely that you would face that kind of situation within your past work profile or within your peers or all of that you may choose to skip a question instead of answering anything very incorrectly or with giving like giving less thought it's better to skip and pass the question because understand that behavior rounds are more to judge how, what kind of person you are what kind of skills you bring on table so i do not want to create a bad image or a incorrect image which i myself might not align to so a very polite answer could be that hey i don't think i face this kind of any situation and um, can't really imagine the imagine the situation in my head in terms of how would i have acted maybe uh, in case i genuinely you know see and face this kind of situation i would be in a better place to think about that so at least it is a reassurance to the interviewer that okay you are being very honest that you have never faced this kind of situation usually i think in 80 to 90% of cases the interviewer still goes ahead and says okay take a wild guess in that case what you obviously get uh, like once you have obviously got that reassurance even if you answer that question a bit incorrectly or a bit you know naively he would not going to blame you or see you for this however be very humble and very very gentle when you answer these kinds of questions uh yeah when you once you when you help and collaborate like in a positive manner with your team member 
and leave yourself or your team member with more learning, it does put a positive impression on the interviewer. Yeah. Okay, a uh, very uh, common question that I always keep facing is that how to answer and convey to HR that in case HR asks, why are you leaving your existing company? And the answer is money. If your answer is money, if your answer is bad boss, if your answer is bad company, if your answer is bad culture, if your answer is too much work pressure, all of these answers technically are incorrect. So a right way to approach this kind of question in terms of, okay, why are you leaving your existing company? I would say turn this question around and frame in sense of, okay, you are looking for growth. You are looking for any, you know, ex exclusive kind of strength and skills that you want to build, which you think the current or the new company that you're applying for will fulfill. Go through the company's profile, read about their vision, read about their objectives, about their mission, the kind of projects they are doing to get more insight about what the company is really looking for and align yourself with that. So that is one way of turning around this question. Second around, second turning at point point can be, hey, I'm looking for something new. I'm looking to explore more around the market. And um, this is what I bring on table. And I think this would be a better place for me to start and learn and grow further. And hence, I'm here to um, interview. I hope that answered your question. Okay, uh, moving ahead and talking about a bit more about technical interviews, like I said, that they are more, you know, very focused uh, interviews to test you, you know, you test your aptitude, test your skills, test the level of knowledge that you have come up with. Also, keep in mind, right, like I was also talking about that in the resume section and do not mention something that you have not worked upon. Do not mention something that you have never seen in the past. So if and that's why you know you could be it could be very difficult for you to crack technical interviews if your resume talks about something which you have never worked upon in that case if someone asks you a question around that and you're not prepared for that that's like a roadblock hey and that also like, like breaks the break the trust of the person who's interviewing because like you've talked about that so high likely and nicely in your resume but you cannot substantiate so whatever you write in your resume particularly has to be substantiated by your performance that you give in your technical interviews. The idea is to match the personality with the actual one in your technical interviews. And if you cannot, that's clearly a very negative deal breaker for you. Because if those two kinds of personalities are not aligning anyhow, very high chances that you will never get another, another feedback call or an interview call from the company that you're wishing for. So always, always be prepared in terms of whatever you write in your work profile, whatever you write in your project section. Be very clear of what are you writing, why are you writing, and you know the background about that. If you're talking about any particular industry there, be very aware of what all pointers you need to know about the industry. Talk about the KPIs, recent trends, recent movements, recent new industry insights. Be very well prepared with all of these basic, you know, cursory research uh, whenever you, you know, sit for in technical interviews. So uh, usually your technical interviews, like apart from the coding test, apart from the aptitude test, are a lot based on scenarios, numbers, you know, cases, sometimes very small, but real time business cases that a person is facing a problem with and you have to solve those kinds of things. Usually, uh, we all uh, take some time to you know, process the information that we have provided within that interview room. However, I always recommend that do not keep the interviewer waiting for your answer or do not solve everything in your mind and come back with an answer. And usually, more often than not, especially in the consulting frameworks or in the marketing uh, domain-specific interviews, I've seen that the person is not really looking for the answer. He is looking for the approach. He is looking for your methodology. He is looking for the, your, you know, thought process and problem solving skills. Okay, what are you thinking? So here are like some six, seven points which always ensure that we are in line with the expectation of a normal technical uh, interview question. 
keep like do not just start losing the data or the information that you are provided by the interviewer first of all take a step back think that what of the problem that he's asking or the or the problem that he's stating is he giving you sufficient data points if yes is the data points sufficiently clarified like do you think that you have assumed something while talking and you know taking notes of the data points which does not align well in your later stage of your answer so keep uh, always ask um the clarifying questions from your interviewer ensure that you understand the problem correctly ensure you have all of the required data in the right place before you kind of sit down and solve it second is communicate your thought process like talk to the interviewer while you're solving that particular problem in that case sometimes what works well for us in that case is sometimes is like you do not have time or you need more time so when you're talking to the interviewer you're keeping him engaged so he sometimes lose track of the amount of time or the number of minutes that you have using consumed to a kind of come up with a solution so communicate your ideas obviously seek that approval that he i am thinking of this i am thinking on these lines what do you think about that do you think it is a fair thing to do do you think you know i am i am missing out something hope that is in line with what you are thinking or what are you you know in line of your answer that you have in your mind in case you're taking any assumptions around some data around some practice of the industry around some fact go back recheck with the interviewer that hey i am assuming this to be this do you think it's a fair assumption to make do you, do you think i should make some changes and all of that obviously communicate what are you thinking and don't just say that okay this is a fact this is a well known fact sometimes you always like give example that hey this is something i've seen normally because you state your example state your reason that why do you think this is equivalent of fact and it's not just an assumption then next step is come down and break down the problems break down the major problem into sub segments and talk that okay hey i can solve this for you i can not solve this because this is more qualitative in nature this is something is controllable this is something is non controllable so break down the problem ensure that you have all of your pieces of like just like a jigsaw or a crossword puzzle you have all your pieces while you are you know joining them with each other write very clean um, solution you know be you, like if you're preparing a diagram if you're preparing a flow chart be very clear don't make it very messy so that tomorrow and you know some moments later if you want to go back and rework you do not forget where did you start you do not forget what steps you did so be very clean in terms of the code you write in terms of the framework that you build while answering the question then obviously ensure that you have taken into consideration all of the scenarios that you know surround the same problem sometimes a lot of times we are so positive in our nature that we think only the positive solutions and forget to talk about the negative um negative side testing we do not talk about the negative testing of the problem that we are solving and sometimes it's very easy for us to forget and leave the edge cases so ensure that you incorporate almost maximum amount of scenarios that you can think of in case you think that you are not able to solve or you're not able to respond to any of the edge cases that may occur in future in real time business at least inform the interviewer that hey i am thinking that this scenario is also possible but uh, since the probability is very low or it is not feasible i mean i may not want to take into consideration instead sometimes you can just pick it as a question to the interviewer that do you think i should consider these kinds of scenarios as well while i'm solving the problem so that at least you know the thought process that you are not just talking about one straight line you are thinking more in depth you are thinking more broadly on the problem than you should have and finally uh, collaborate with your interviewer the idea of having a very clean um well written case round well written guest estimate well written question and technical is that the interviewer at the end should feel happy about your approach about your thought process he should at least be agreeing to the fact that okay hey you were close to the answer or, or yeah you did it in the right manner so he should feel that satisfaction from the time that he's spending on you and and the time he's spending with you to solve a particular case so that level of collaboration is something that you have to really showcase do not sit and argue with the interviewer even if you do not align at least you can present your opinion but do not be very rigid be very flexible 
So the idea is actually to figure out that okay, the interview seems to be satisfied in the way you have progressed. So that is the whole objective that we we should try and achieve through our technical rounds. So obviously there are a lot more some of the do's and some of the don'ts that we should really follow when we think of technical interviews. Uh, do's be very well prepared. Go through your resume, go through your related concepts, go back to your research, go back to the industries that you've worked for. Have that particular research set mind in your uh, framework. Like, do not just go blank. Keep those kinds of thought very well, you know, clear in your mind when you go and be prepared for the interview. Second, listen carefully. A lot of them are more communication-related gaps that we face in a technical interview. More so now because we are not giving face-to-face -face interviews. We are sitting in two different places. Sometimes network is an issue. Sometimes the way he's the person speaking, it takes some you know some while to capture and uh, understand the accent if the person is out of the country or otherwise. Uh, explain your thought process. Like I have, I I don't think I can emphasize much on this. Uh, post our last slide, obviously talk to the interviewer, express your thoughts, express your opinions, be very flexible, but do express your opinions. Do not uh, do not refrain from expressing what you think just because you think that, okay, he may not like it or he may not, he may feel that, okay, I am not a right person. Remove that fear, talk more expressively, more intuitively, it would really work well for you. And finally, ask questions. Don't be afraid of seeking clarifications. Don't be seek be afraid of seeking and getting your assumptions validated. Sometimes, uh, while I've, I've seen that particular do, I also remember that often interviews say that, okay, you take five minutes, solve the case, come back with an answer, and then we'll discuss. And w you would be thinking in your mind that, okay, I have, I'm taking some XYZ assumptions, uh, but I'm, I'm not talking to the interviewer, and he may not validate, he may not assess. So I would say even if you, you are faced with a disclaimer saying that, hey, I am given five minutes and only post that within a talk, at least uh, be a little more louder with your thought process. You know, Do not look up to him for a solution. Do not look up to him for a response. But at least convey you know, that, uh, see, I have been thinking about an urban and rural kind of population. This is a normal... Um, percentage groupism that I look for because I think I've read somewhere in the past because this is how my GDP is working or something like that. Even if you're talking to yourself, he's a passive listener to what you are saying. So in that case, just be a little more louder with the thought processes that you're running in your mind so that he becomes, you know, engaged automatically. And sometimes, you know, interviews get forced to ask questions while like in between. So they are there to break that silence. So, which gives you an opportunity to go back and ask questions. So, I mean, that's a cool way of, you know, driving your interviews. But there are a couple of don'ts that you should really not, not touch upon. Don't bluff. It's very okay to say, I do not know. I will come back to you later. I'll definitely check on this and come back and be prepared. But do not talk about something that you do not know at all. Don't be too casual. Don't uh, turn very informal. Some just because you share similar kind of interest, you know, there are possibilities that you share similar kind of interests which are more informal in nature. But don't be very casual. At least maintain that professional uh, behavior, professional uh, personality while you are in the interview room. You may want to have an uh, informal bond outside the interview room, but as long as you are in the interview room, ensure that you are professional. Do not rush to conclusions, you know. Take your time to build the answer, to answer the questions. It's okay to take five seconds break before you kind of go back and answer the question being asked. Do not just jump over the question right there and then. Don't be too negative. I think I have also uh, highlighted this point in my behavioral interview rounds that do not talk about bad things that have happened to you. At least leave the uh, interview with a positive side about you. And even if there's a negative thing, you they should know that you can turn that things around for the good. Now, next is talking about uh, the different kinds of domains that I have seen normally and how the interviews, uh, technical rounds are being scored there. 
for example in the finance uh, related domain a lot of case studies are there you everybody is a number game and a number game or a lot of data analytics related exercises questions tasks assignments sometimes sometimes those discussions happen in the uh, interview itself so be very you know uh, on tips with your numbers just do not bluff and you know miss out on normal uh, mathematical numbers uh very uh, common and in, uh, in banking and ib or all of these kinds of profiles that you always have a good one hour q and a back to back you know grilling and stress sessions around the relevant topics and the concepts that are related to the job profile so ensure that you thoroughly revise them before you enter a finance um, interview for banking a lot more case studies are data driven but fintechs are also looking for you know after you test uh somewhere they're also looking for coding test despite that you do not need need a coder you end up not coding those questions later on but they want to ensure that you are well versed with those kinds of languages that they need at their uh, disposal often bank and fintechs they are a lot more data driven and they have a huge amount of data which some somehow is not being able to easily manage to excel so they want to ensure that you learn different kinds of program languages that they normally use to fetch out and talk about the data more often so hence these are the new things that have come up in the market for consulting it's a very straightforward three level round first is guess estimates where you have like back to back scenarios and numbers to talk about second there are there are case rounds where you're given business cases from different and random industries and you are there to solve them for them and finally there's always a concept q&a which is more about uh, the technical round of your past work how you have behaved how do you think about strategy how do you think about different industries to more figure out which kind of industry you're interested in and what kind of concepts you are very well versed with marketing uh, a lot of group discussions i've seen happening in marketing uh, a couple of people are also given sales task and they have scenario based on their marketing or real business problem in terms of segmentation or target or what kind of audience i should talk about how should i launch my product and all of that a lot of product pricing related problems you get to solve there uh, not very often you use your theory uh, theory and the things that you have read in the classes uh, put to use but you would look more about around you in terms of what other companies are doing what other competitor people are doing and talk more about those things to make it more lively to showcase that you you are well informed you track these kinds of market campaigns you understand marketing campaigns quite easily and nicely and it also gives you a very well informed attire and a posture to the interviewer product management and cos is the chief of staff roles these are some two uh, new pick and additions into the corporate era from almost like 2 to 3 uh, years now product management people they are there middlemen technically for business and the risk of the marketing teams so they have to align with all of these kinds of people so collaboration should be very handy and a lot of collaborative tasks could be could be there for you and finally it's more like a question and answer about your concepts about the business things that you know about the business product that you are forging into and a bit more about product while a chief of staff role is a clearly clearly managerial position where you need to interact with a lot of people so collaboration cohesiveness quickness timeliness you know a uh, capacity to understand different multiple domains all at once a will to manage your projects well so a lot of these kinds of things are being uh, checked upon in a cos interview rounds you may be given couple of assignments around that you may be asked to figure out some business question and answer and business problems to solve sometimes there also a team fitment test that people do in terms of um like you are getting interviewed from different team heads so instead of no matter you respond to one head the other four people from different domains are also interviewing you so that they can also figure out okay how well was you are with their kinds of concepts and how could you think you'll be able to work with them so a lot of these kinds of stuff has started happening for chief of staff roles no matter they come up with a lot of more power and responsibility but they are really really big managerial positions because you are not running a particular project you are technically running everything that is running inside an organization so 
these are the uh, ways that uh, normally an interviewer tries and assesses you in each of these uh, domains. And here, I think I open for questions on um, technical interviews. Uh, I think while people are responding and thinking and processing the information that we have spoken so far, and uh, while you guys are in process of putting down your questions in the chat section, let me just run over to the last additional portion of what are the new kind of uh, questions that you can ask the interviewer apart from our daily stuff. So these are the three, four questions that I've figured out that, okay, they are more easy to understand and they also give you a little more insight about the interviewer about the team that you're going to be working with about the organization one is understanding what are the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the position that you're applying for so that gives you an insight on how your day you know going to be looking like second could be some biggest challenges that the company is facing right now what kind of projects are there are there and how do you think your position will be able to contribute this shows your eagerness to learn, your quickness to adapt. And uh, when you ask these kinds of challenges, it gives you a little more insight on what kind of work uh, as an organization people are targeting, what kind of work is going to, you know, coming your way. So that in case you feel that okay, you are less prepared, you can prepare yourself a little more better before uh, joining the organization if at all that happens. Uh, how does company support the professional development, you know? We all are very much inclined to the growth and the learning associated with us you know, in the position that we're applying for, in the organization that we're working with, with the people that we're working with and all of that. So these, uh, this question kind of helps you assess, okay, how does company really help me? What are the skills that you need to own more to make it a right fit for the kind of role that you're applying for? Are there any prerequisites for the role that you're applying for? So that is something that you can assess with these kinds of questions last and often when you say is what is the management style you know what kind of people work in like is it flexible it is fixed people prefer working from home people prefer working from office um what uh it, it helps you understand the working dynamics that okay are we a lot more meeting driven are we a lot more call driven what kind of management style is working around for the organization for the position for the team that you're working for it helps you prepare yourself a little more mentally better before you get in and start working with them because you know what they work, you know how they respond, so you can prepare yourself accordingly. So these are some uh, different questions apart from the usual ones that we normally ask the interviewer and they can at least give you a little more uh, better insight about the organization, about the position, about the company, sometimes about the hiring managers because Usually, I think one technical round is definitely, definitely taken by key hiring manager, the team lead uh, who's who's going to be working with you. So having an opinion from those kind of people is like a very, you know, better way or a very good way of pre-starting and getting pre-prepared for uh, any role that you pick. Uh, I think that is all, and I open the house for questions. How to answer interview with the question, why do you choose software career while your graduation is not anyway, doesn't relate to software? So in that case, in these kinds of questions where you think that your work profile is not related to the kind of education, the kind of stuff you have learned in the past, um, one way is to turn around through your project section so that you show your latent interest in these kinds of skills. 
um that's a very good way to turn down saying that hey i have been working for this it's just that i'm not got an opportunity to really showcase and put to put those skills to use on the corporate front but i think um uh, now is the right time and i have got the right place to work uh, and these kinds of answers can help and otherwise uh, i would say that sometimes uh, if you are very off your domain and you are applying to a place which is completely very off the profile that you have built for yourself prefer doing some certification courses or something like something like these things which at least show an interest um to the interviewer that okay hey you are genuinely inclined so you might want to do all of those stuff to show that inclination that you might want to build for the interviewer which makes it easy to answer these kinds of question further what should we include in your introduction a usual way to int to introduce yourself or tell me about yourself and answer that kind of a question is more like a five pointer game leave the person with your name and location leave uh, the person with the latest education that you have done a uh, brief about your work experience the industries the domains that you have more worked with and uh, then also a close the question uh, with leaving a bit about your hobbies about how do you spend your time or what is the activity that keeps you busy apart from work so a little more informal line to go with uh, these are the five pointers which help you answer this question more or less within 2 minutes and also giving sufficient information to the interviewer to start the interview any more questions nowadays most companies uh seeking candidates to join candidates asap that is around 15 days but the company doesn't need candidates in less than 30 to 60 days uh in that case be very clear uh, to the interviewer or uh, to the hr and talk to the hr in terms of what are you looking for are you looking for an immediate joiner because i have a notice period and all of that be very clear and upfront about that that's one way of turning the situation around second way is also to um, at least rightfully disclose to your current employer that hey i am looking for a switch and uh, this is what this is the kind of profile i'm looking at this is the offers that i may get in time so in case there's something that i can fast track to get over with my current position i would like to take that and talk to the uh, manager and reporting manager how does he respond to these kinds of things so that is another way to get your uh, application to move fast track some companies give only 25 percent of hike from the previous employment so how do you negotiate with them uh i think it depends on what kind of market and what kind of role you're looking for and also the kind of organization you want to tap to a lot of startups are giving a little more higher percentages in terms of the hike on your previous salary however i think it is completely it is very qualitative in nature and depending on the kind of profile that you are applying for and the kind of candidate you are bringing on table salary package can be as small as 50% hike i feel like i'm being short when i say more than 50% uh again like this is very qualitative in nature and uh, understand uh, like before negotiating your salary or anything like that my recommendation is going to be understand the budget and the expectations from the hr that for, hr of the company that you are applying to so that you do not become and sound very unreasonable while you negotiate your salary once and second you are also aware about you know what the market is offering you know what are the trends uh, compensation trends that have been running around 
so that gives you a little more sense than uh, in terms of what height you should ask for you know how are you placed in the market and everything so just do not uh, throw out a random number ensure that you have anything in your mind to substantiate the number that you are quoting in future how can i ask from you if i have any questions in future krishna you can connect with me um via linkedin and i think rupinder or shailendra would be a better place to answer this question and, and how you can get in touch with me ahead so i hope guys you got the the answer of your queries of course it will if you will need to ask some question later on uh, you can ask through a porva we will share the detail even you can ask through our channel as well there we will try to convey to a porva and some day we will try to answer those type of questions as well hope krishna the answer is your question any more questions before we close for the day i think we have done we don't have any such type of question oh, so correct so thank you pura for your wonderful session you have given a lot of insight about how to face the technical interview how to answer the things definitely the people implement in their interview and so many people already giving the interview when you have seen the chat as well they able to get the answer so i appreciate your time you have given to us thank you very much thank you and looking forward thank you yeah, thank you